Stand by, everybody. Starting in five seconds. Welcome in, Monica McNutt, sitting with some champs. I was going to say ballers, because that's my sport, but we've got multiple <laughs> sports represented. Madison Packer, Sue Bird, Arlie Krieger. Guys, women's sports is evolving on the biggest stage possible, and I think we'd be remiss if we didn't acknowledge the shifts in the college landscapes. So I want to start with NIL. How much do you think that that has changed, Sue, the opportunity, in particular, in women's college basketball? Yeah, it's... Um... It'll be looked at as a game changer, a complete game changer. Um, I think at times there's been a disconnect between your college career and then when you turn pro and you have, you know, a WNBA career, whether it's in media, investment, fan bases, like sometimes it's like people don't continue to follow us. So I think what's beautiful about the NIL is you're going to be able to build um, a following, but you're going to have brands that are supporting you. And now those brands who follow you freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, they're just going to stay with you into the pro game. And so I think that's going to be a connector because, like I said, there has been a disconnect. And that connection is really important to growing the professional ranks. And as a kid, I mean, give me that money. And listen, it's pretty cool. Like, you know, per <laughs> diem's all right yes, and the lunch yes, halls are yes, cool, yes. but, you know. Yeah. And you get to up your game a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ali, women's soccer has kind of been one of the more notable women's sports for, mm. in terms of all the fights that you guys have been involved mm. in, the Olympic teams, the World Cup teams. You guys have won at a high level. But when you look at NIL impacting women in soccer earlier in their career, what maybe concerns do you have? I mean, I'm thinking about it like if I were in college now having to like, you know, start to design my brand and like put myself out there. I was I was saying earlier, I'd be a little stressed like because I don't know if I would be in the position that I am now because maybe I would have been a little bit more concerned about that um, than actually performing and playing well and getting to the level that I wanted to get at. All in all, I can also just say that this is what is supposed to happen because of what we've done too and kind of have paved this way. Now, you know, we want to see younger players really get what they deserve. If you are not fortunate to go on and go pro, it's a small window to capitalize on as a female athlete, as a woman athlete, but I know it has not, NIO has not yet trickled into hockey. Yeah, I think in the antithesis of what Sue was saying, like we're just a little bit further behind. So it doesn't exist right now on a massive level with college students because there hasn't been a sustainable option where everyone's playing together on the other side. So other than the Olympics every four, four years where sponsors all jump on board for that, of course, but there's a big gap in between those years. So I think just as, as the pro league continues to grow and sponsorship opportunities happen there, it should create opportunity for the wave behind them. Love those answers. Sue, <laughs> your recent venture as an investor and minority owner in Gotham FC. Tell us what Woo! motivated you. There we go, yeah. Champion. To pursue to the ownership. Why the Thanks, NWSL? Alex. You're welcome. Yes, congratulations. Wow, look Appreciate at that. that. Look at that. that. Um, God, a lot Ooh. of reasons. I think initially it was just um, a lot of what I've been doing is almost like a money where my mouth is type of a vibe. Mm. Like I've been complaining about, you know, investment and complaining about coverage. So that's where Together comes in. The investment, obviously. That's where Gotham comes in. Um, and I do think it's important to have former athletes in these positions. Similar to what I was saying earlier, just about having people in the room that have mm -hmm. an understanding. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important. That perspective needs to be present at all times. And also, why shouldn't the former athlete be able to participate in the growth? Mm -hmm. And this is a way in which we can do it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the combination for me. And, and I'm trying to be... I'm trying to own all the things. Okay, we see you. <laughs> all the things. We need to stay connected to Sue, y'all. Yeah, yeah, clearly. Yeah. On the other end, though, competing mm -hmm. when Sue joins the ownership group, yeah. she just talked about former athletes being in that room. Mm -hmm. Were you excited? Very excited. Um, because, you know, to have somebody of her caliber and just knowledge of, the, of sport, I should say, um, and the game. Obviously, <laughs> she knows now a lot. But... Um, in all seriousness, it's just so helpful because when she speaks, people listen. And, um, you know, she has such a huge platform and um, she has so much weight behind what she says and, and who she is. And so that, to me, is so valuable for our club. I, I love, first of all, your interest. I love that you felt like your voice was heard. Madison, there's a really cool partnership in the PWHL between, um, with the company Molson, right? The See My Name campaign. How did that come to be? Yeah, I think... Men's hockey, obviously, the nameplate is up at the top, and people never considered, like, when women wear their hair in a ponytail or braid, whatever, it covers it up so you don't see it. Um, and so Molson partnered with the league to move the nameplate to the bottom, 
So now you can see everyone's name along with their number, and then there's a, an opportunity for branding at the top where Molson's logo goes where the old nameplate was. Um, and I think it's two things. One, it elevates the women individually in their name and allows them to get a little bit more recognition, but also it immediately becomes recognizable as a women's hockey jersey. Um, and so that's just a cool, good marketing play and allows us to separate ourselves a little bit. That's, I, I would have never thought about that. Like, were you energized when you heard about this partnership or like, how did it hit? Well, I'm not really impacted by it. Clearly, me, <laughs> me neither, friend. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's cool. I mean, it just shows that brands are recognizing in some ways that, that women are different from men and it is a nice gesture that uh, acknowledges maybe a, a way to give a little bit more visibility uh, and credit to the players. I know we have another attempt at being mindful of women <laughs> that not everybody on this panel <laughs> agrees with. <laughs> so uh, the NWSL this, this season is deciding to get rid of white shorts because, we'll put it uh, plainly for folks that might not be comfortable, the ability to give birth to children, right? Um, and I, I will say, as we had gray uniforms for practice uniforms, and I hated the gray practice uniforms that time of the month. It was very stressful. You don't feel the same way though, Allie. No, I mean, I would have hated the gray because I sweat a lot and that would have not been a good <laughs> look. Mm -hmm. But um, I think white is sharp. I think I don't, I, I support both, right? Like I support women who feel more confident wearing, you know, black or any other color that would potentially hide that mm -hmm. if there were an accident or something to happen. Um, but I feel strongly about, you know, just us feeling like ourselves and being a woman. And I don't want to feel bad about that, that this is something that happens naturally to me every month. And I would rather ask and put the question on the brands um, and uh, the companies to design better garments or underwear or spandex that could potentially help you know, hide that a little bit more if there were something to happen instead of us, you know, banning a certain color mm -hmm. just because it could, you know, seep through or, you know, um, be a bad thing considered. Like, I, I want to feel, I don't want to feel bad about being a woman. So I think this is kind of interesting because while we are all here pushing women's sports forward, having these conversations, I do think that the idea that we all think the same is unfair. Yeah. Um, and there has to be room, you used the word nuance earlier. And, and while this... I mean, it's a pretty big issue if you're having a rough week. Oof. But like, there are larger issues where we don't necessarily always agree and you gotta be able to come to the table and hear one another.